Hi, welcome to the Drama Free Living Podcast. It's Dennis and Lisa. And Lisa, this is the last podcast, session number four on goal setting and this whole idea of like how to make a great upcoming year. Absolutely. And we are talking today about mistakes, typical mistakes that people make when goal setting. So you set yourself up and you put all the work into setting your goals and kind of creating them. And you fail to do these simple things that are typical mistakes that people make mm -hmm. when they goal set. And it just makes your, your goals not work, which makes your year not work. So Listen up, kind of think through the goals that you've set or yeah. think through when you're getting ready to set goals and check, make sure you're not doing these mistakes so your goals can succeed and yeah. so you can succeed. Yeah. And listen, if you have not downloaded the 2024 goal setting worksheet, take a minute, click the link in the it's notes. It's totally free. It's our gift to you. Just use it to set your goals and and kind of think through what you've got going on and what you want to accomplish. Yeah. So we want it to be a resource. And, and as you continue to like look through your year, look through your goals, I think you want to remember progress, not perfection. And a lot of times we, if it's not perfect, then we don't feel like we're making any progress. We didn't do it totally right. And you want to step back and go, hey, I'm making progress. I mean, weight loss is a great example. Mm -hmm. Right. It's like, oh, I gained an extra pound this week and I'm upset. Well, in the grand scheme of things, you've lost seven. Right. So look at like this. Hey, I am making progress. I'm getting a little bit better. And I think incremental improvement, that's kind of the idea. And it also, you know, think about as you continue to goal set, you've got to have this adaptability, flexibility. Right. So continue to measure progress. And we just want to encourage you to share your goals, share your goals with those people that are closest to you be, and ask them to hold you accountable. Because I know for me and share it with people that maybe like you feel like, oh, gosh, if I don't hit this, I'm, I'm going to disappoint them or I'm going to look bad in their eyes. Because I know for me that that's a powerful motivator because I want to do the right actions. And so it kind of increases that um, accountability. One thing we want to cover here, one mistake people make is they don't have clarity. Yeah, that clarity, if you don't have clarity, it's it's really hard to have an effective goal and to meet that goal because you don't even know what the goal is. Well, and Lisa, I remember this time and we're really young and we're, we're, have, we're taking this trip with this particular person. And I was I was just sharing my heart about goals and I want this and I want this. And I remember turning to him and he looked at me kind of confused. And I said, well, is it not clear to you? And he said, well, is it clear to you? And I realized it wasn't clear to me. And so obviously I was communicating a jumbled mess probably to him. And so the first person that you've got to get clarity with is you've got to get clarity here. Right. And never try to get clarity outside of yourself. And I think that's the mistake is that we share these things and it's not really clear to us and it's not crystal clear. And so it kind of becomes this mess. And then we're mad when people aren't bought into and don't collaborate with our goals because it's not clear to them. And and they can't collaborate with them if they can't even tell for sure what it is that they're that they're collaborating with. All right, and this has happened to me multiple times where maybe a team member hasn't met expectations, and then we talked back through it, and they said, "Oh, that's what you meant." And really, instead of getting maybe mad at the person, I have to step back and go, "Okay, how did I not communicate it clear enough? How can I increase the clarity? What did I forget to say? What did I not say?" Were you clear yourself? Did right. you were you clear yourself? Or did you just not communicate it clearly? Like, where was the breakdown in that clarity? Yeah, and and I think having that kind of conversation and self-reflection on yourself, it, it keeps the responsibility here, right? Because I know that goals really increase responsibility. And whatever goal that I don't feel I'm responsible for, I'm never going to step in and create a plan and create a strategy. Mm -hmm. and, and I think sometimes, like, we get these external pressures. And you got to know what these pressure points are for you. I know sometimes when, when cash flow is tight, it can be a pressure point for me. And I start to lose that clarity on what like the big picture is, mm -hmm. or I'm afraid of making an investment because maybe this month the cash flow is a little tight. And so really getting clear and having clarity, that clarity creates that confidence to step in and maybe do some of the hard things or the difficult things or the uncomfortable things. That's incredible. I love yeah. that. And that's those that would be negative external pressure because sometimes you can have positive external pressure yeah. as in positive peer pressure that helps you accomplish that goal. But if you're not clear and 
and there's there's external pressure that presses against you. It'll help you. It'll cause you to lose your focus. Yeah, it'll really kind of muddy those waters, mm-hmm. and you want to continue to make mm-hmm. it clear. So what, what's and another then another one? one is another mistake is unrealistic expectations. So we mm-hmm. think, man, we think, man, I am going to make a million dollars this year. Yeah. Well, maybe you can make a million dollars this year. Maybe that's totally realistic, but. I don't think it's realistic. If you've never made $50,000 a year, right? So how big is the gap? How big is the jump? Those are overly ambitious goals. Mm -hmm. Overly ambitious goals are because of unrealistic expectations and ignoring time constraints. So another unrealistic expectation would be, okay, I'm going to train for a half marathon and I'm going to run it next weekend. Well, if you've never run before, if you've never run before, I mean, even if you do run, even if you run three miles a day, it's still probably not a good idea to run a half marathon next week. I mean, it, it takes, you know, a good, it takes at least three weeks. Take it from me. It takes about three. (laughs) It it has been done. It has been known to be done. Eight to 12 weeks um, of a good program to, to train for that. And so when you don't have a realistic time constraint, and I know that that's something that our team deals with sometimes because, Dennis, you're full of great ideas and sometimes our team is frustrated. Sure. And because you are thinking, okay, I can do this now and we can do this now. And our team is like, wait a minute, that's not a realistic time constraint. Let's let's adjust the time and then we can take your incredible idea and put it within that time frame. And this is where you need voices and listening to voices. And this is why we have to build a team with other perspectives. It just plays into a lot of things. Absolutely. And then another mistake, another unrealistic expectation is comparing to others. Now we talked about, you know, making a million dollars next year. Well, if you haven't made 50,000 this year, you're not going to make a million. Well, don't compare yourself to someone that said they are going to make a million or don't compare yourself to, you know, if you've got someone that says, Hey, I'm going to run a half marathon or I'm going to learn another language. There's that's great, but your life is your life. Don't take somebody else's goals for your life. Take your own goals for your right, life. Cause you're unique. So you should have unique goals. Absolutely. Right? If I'm unique, unique gifts, I can't compare my gifts with your gifts. They're, they're unique. And so this is where you, you just, you build your best life ever. Absolutely. Whatever that best life for you is. And then another mistake in unrealistic expectations would be um, all or nothing thinking. And really that comes in when, when you don't celebrate the small wins. Hmm. So you think, okay, I, I didn't, I didn't do these steps in this goal and this goal is just, okay, I'm just going to scrap the whole thing. If I can't do it all and I can't do it perfectly, I'm just going to scrap the whole thing. Or if I can't do it the way I want it with these clients or with these team members or with these family members, I'm just not going to do it at all. It's not worth it. Well, I'm sure that there was progress and Mm -hmm. there were small wins and maybe it didn't come out exactly how you thought, or maybe it's not progressing how you thought, but celebrate the small wins, celebrate each step and each thing that made you better today or made your team better today or made your product yeah. better today than it was yesterday. I mean, maybe maybe something failed, but guess what? You just learned a better way not to do something. Yeah, that's a great way to look at it. Another one, Lisa, is this idea of procrastination. Now, let's just think about procrastination for a minute. So I'm right here and I want to. I have this bigger future out in the future and I set these goals out in the future. Well, the fact that it's a goal means I've never done it I might not even know how to do it. It's not been done before or, you know, it's not something I've personally experienced. So because I don't know how, I typically lack the confidence. And so the very first thing I do is I procrastinate. Mm. Now, here's what's interesting about procrastination. It's the secret sin everybody does, just nobody ever talks about, right? And we typically are procrastinating because we lack a commitment or we lack confidence. And so I think just sort of telling yourself the truth is like, hey, I'm procrastinating right now. It just, that gives you the freedom and then go, okay, how do I increase my commitment? What do I do to get more confidence, right? And and then the other flip side of that whole perfection is, or procrastination is perfectionism. Mm-hmm. It's it's a little bit the flip side of the same coin, right? Is that you procrastinate because you don't, you can't be perfect. Well, and, and at the end, it's like, think about it. Perfectionism is just a myth. Nothing can ever, if you say something's perfect, that means that you can never, ever be improved. Right. And we all know it can be improved maybe just a little bit, right? Then a little bit faster and a little bit better. Just some way, somehow we can increase the quality. There's some or, sort of tweak that we can make that we can r- make it better. Right. And so people typically like procrastinate maybe because it's like, well, it's not going to be perfect. And it's not supposed to be perfect. And I think the way to look at your goals is it's just an experiment. 
hey, we're going to set this out in the future. It's going to be a guess. We're going to try this experiment this year, mm -hmm. and we're going to learn a lot of things. And we're going to become better for it. Yeah. And, and, and also, I think, like, you know, we procrastinate because we're looking at short-term pleasure over long-term gain. And we right. do that a lot in we, our culture. We, we do. It's like, well, no, I want to eat the pizza tonight. Right. I want to have the ice cream tonight or, you know, I don't want to run or, you know, I don't want to save money or, you know, I, I, I don't want to, you know, call my kids or what well, multiple different things. And so sort of think through like what are the long term benefits? Mm -hmm. And I know whenever I'm procrastinating, it's because I have short term thinking. Yeah. But when I can step down and go, OK, what's the long term benefit? What's the very next action? How do I increase the commitment and confidence? It gets me it gets me moving. So don't procrastinate. And one way to not procrastinate or to help yourself procrastinate less would be to plan. And that's mm -hmm. that's the next mistake is inadequate planning mm -hmm. and inadequate planning. It just it causes all kinds of messes. It causes uh, frustration. Um, it causes unmet expectations. Um, it, it creates a lack of prioritization. Um, and it, it just causes us to have a low commitment level. And adequate planning just really, it just requires thoughtful preparation. But when we don't put adequate planning in to our day-to-day -day and into our um, – yeah into our goal setting, then it's it's not going to succeed. Yeah. Planning something that happens every day, every week, at, right? It's, it is it is a continual and it's a skill. And so it's something to get better at. But when you lack the planning, that's a mistake. People, they think, oh, I can just set a goal and like magic, it will just happen. And, you know, the power of your life is in the plan of your life and the power of your goal is in the plan of your goal. And then as you do, it kind of brings it back to like this. Another mistake that I want to talk about is lack of commitment. Kind of talk about you know, procrastination, but really commitment when I, it's really about getting back to why this is important to me. Mm. And I think, you know, with goals, and I think before you ever, ever sell your team on a goal, you first have to sell yourself, right? Typically- when, You have to want it. Yeah, you really have to want it. It's like, I've got to be sold on the inside that this is really, really important. And I know for me, whenever I've lost my why, I always lose my way. If I have lost my way, I'm kind of going sideways. It's typically because I've lost that why. And so you want to kind of, you know, really get that commitment, sell yourself first. That's the first sale on any goal is sell yourself. And then it really like work to stay inspired. Like what inspires you? Mm -hmm. So I've made these commitments and, and really it's like commitment is a depleting resource. You, let's just be honest. You are not a hundred percent all the time excited and committed Right. There are some nights when I'm like, I, sometimes you just want to say no. Yeah. Or some nights I just, I just want a bowl of ice cream. I know. I, I know it's right. But it's like I'm just losing my commitment. And so you want to step back and go, OK, what inspires you? Right. What gives you that motivation, that drive? And what increases your commitment? So it decreases your commitments. What are the people around you? It's why surrounding yourself with people that, you know, can inspire that commitment is super important. It, it, it's why. It's why I go to certain workshops and certain places. I go, I go to certain places every quarter because I'm just as inspired to increase my commitment to go after these bigger, ambitious goals. And so I think staying inspired is huge. And when you stay inspired, you're more adaptable because you yeah. see what's possible. And failure to adapt is a huge mistake mm -hmm. when when setting goals and when trying to make a great 2024. We, we always have unforeseen challenges. There are always things. That always, happen. always. There are always. I, yep. I, I do agree. not. I do not like the term always or <laughs> never. But in this situation, it is true. There are always. I was just thinking. I hardly ever hear you say always or never. I know because they're, those are very strong words. But there are always unforeseen circumstances. Yeah, There's always new information mm -hmm. and changing changing things that that go that happen. Changing circumstances, yeah. new challenges, and when we can't adapt, then those those unforeseen challenges, those new circumstances, that new information, that changing, it, it breaks the goal and it breaks us. But when we can adapt and we can be flexible and we can create kind of a flexibility mindset and a growth mindset, then we our goals are more likely to succeed because yeah. we're not broken by the by the mm. change in circumstance and when we develop and we cultivate and this growth mindset and when we maintain the growth mindset then we're more likely to be able to 
to kind of hold on to those goals and and adjust mm-hmm. with them. Yeah, and then as you continue to face these challenges, it's this whole idea of obstacles. And we've talked about this before, but I was thinking about it. Why why do we need obstacles? They serve a purpose. And really, it's, the obstacle serves the purpose of learning and growth. Without an obstacle, I never grow. I never develop. I, I never change. So it's very, very important that that I have an obstacle. And it also it really builds the resilience. Without the obstacle, without some of the adversity, I don't get stronger. And, and then, and then without the obstacle, I'm I'm not I'm not creative. That's like I need to develop this skill and capability. And so when I overlook it, I don't step into creativity. And really think about this: that the the obstacle is the catalyst for innovation. Hmm. Every obstacle, every roadblock becomes the catalyst for innovation. So if you la- if you're lacking innovation, maybe you've overlooked some of the obstacles. So you actually really need it, and really it creates preparation for future challenges. Because just like you said, you always have challenges. So here's the thing: 2000, this next year, you're gonna whatever year you happen to be in, right? As you're listening to this, you're gonna have challenges. Right? You're going to have challenges next month. You're going to have challenges next week. But the challenges next week are preparing you for the challenges that are going to happen next month. And if you can overcome these challenges this week, then you become resilient and you become more creative and you go, wow, what are bigger challenges that I can take? Mm-hmm. What are bigger obstacles that I can sink my teeth into? And so really it's an obstacle is just an opportunity. That obstacle is an opportunity to be more creative. And when you look at it that way and go, whoa, where are ways I can be more creative? It kind of fuels that innovation. Absolutely. And then another mistake in in goal setting and in walking out our goals is negative self-talk. Hmm. Uh, sometimes we are so hard on ourselves. Yeah. And we're so hard on ourselves that we don't even want to be with ourselves, which is why we numb and we do different behaviors so we never have to sit alone with ourselves. Yeah. And it's so difficult because then you can't accomplish anything. You've got these aspirations. And if you if you are talking yourself down, you're undermining your confidence. And when you have this negative self-talk going on, you're, you're creating a a fear of failure, and you're increasing in procrastination. Yeah. Um, also, when you when you're full of negative self talk, it's so difficult to visualize the the accomplishment of a goal. the The positive visualization, positive visualization, is so important. It's incredibly important when we when we set goals. We need to be able to see. Okay, this is what I want. This is where I want to be. This is because there's a pain to it. There's there's a difficulty, there's uncomfortableness involved in in setting our goals and reaching our goals, and there's going to be pain. But we need to know that there's a payoff. We need yeah. to know that there's this this positive, amazing thing that's waiting for us, and that, that it's so real we could taste it. But when we when we have negative self talk, it really hinders that that positive vis- visualization because we're really destroying our own confidence. Absolutely, it's absolutely. a self fulfilling prophecy. Absolutely. So what you have to do is you've got to challenge those negative thoughts. Yeah. So challenge the negative thoughts and wait a minute, you know, replace it with with a truth, with a positive thought that's true. Um, celebrate your sm- celebrate small wins. Find yeah. small wins to celebrate, to encourage yourself, and then also practice self-compassion. No, you're not going to do it right. No, you're not going to do it perfect. And you know what? That's because you're human. So rather than sitting in negative self-talk and, and having it just completely destroy your goals or 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 kind of hold you back, go ahead and just challenge them and and celebrate those wins and and practice self-compassion. Well, and a lot of people they 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 use the past this way. Mm-hmm. Right? Part of the problem with the past is that they're they're kind of judging what they know today with what they knew like maybe last year. Well, last year you were doing the best you could with what you knew, with what you had, the skills that you had, but today you're different. Yeah. Right. You know more. You have different skills, and and this is Lisa. This is something that I've really worked on. And I remember you asking me one time, is that hey, if if somebody were talking to me the way that you're talking to yourself, how would how would you respond to that person? Right. Right. And it's like we beat ourselves up. Right. We're beating ourselves up in our own head. But imagine if somebody else was beating up your spouse, or beating up like your signal, or beating up your kids the way that you're beating up yourself. And we got to look at ourselves that way. Would you spend time with you if you talk to yourself that way? Yeah. 
And so you, this is really, it's important. So it, in this, it is one of the number one destroyers and it's one of the number one overlooked things that people don't ever think about is that that negative self-talk is actually destroying your future. And what's interesting is people don't even realize, I think, that they're actually talking negative. Uh, to, to themselves, they to them it's just it's just normal. It's just oh well, I didn't do that right. I can't do that right. So a, a little bit of a challenge would be begin to write down those thoughts that come to your head, write them down or record them or something just to kind of be able to evaluate or speak them out loud to someone that you trust and and to find out, huh. Well, yeah, that's really not a very positive perspective. That's well, kind of a negative know, perspective. You know, and, and I'm thinking about, you know, because we've had clients and even a couple of roundtable participants this last year, I remember them talking about, well, I'm more creative when I'm angry. Well, Lisa, you know, I'm thinking about it now that I'm kind of thinking about it. It's like, no, that's just the only place you know. You don't know what positive because you're never positive. And so how creative, how much more creative could you be when if you... When the endless possibilities but, exist. Right. But but they don't know that state. They only know this, I'm beating myself up and I'm always angry at myself. And that's the only state they know. And and they have created results out of that. They have been creative out of that. But wow, what if you try over here? But they're absolutely miserable doing it. Yeah. And imagine if you tried over here, what could that look like? And I, and I think it's not true that they're necessarily more creative. It's just that that's the only state that they know. Right. So we just want you to maybe try a different state. Right, try a different state of mind. And then the last one, um, a mistake is really a lack of accountability. Right. And we just want to encourage you, like, listen, you know, share your bigger future with other people. Kind of get it out in the open. And I think what happens is, is that when you – people don't share it because they don't want to take responsibility. Right? If I know somebody's going to be asking me – right, almost like this, Lisa. Have you realized nobody ever, ever cares what you eat until you say – Hey, I'm going to go on a diet. Hey, I'm going to lose 10 pounds. Hey, I'm going to lose 10 pounds. And as soon as you say, I'm going to lose 10 pounds, and the next day you're eating ice cream, you're like, um, hey, I thought you said you were, right? It's like nobody cares what you're eating until you say, oh, I'm going to do this. And, but I think that's the power of get it out there and it just increases the responsibility. And then, and then I think it kind of like pushes you past your comfort zone is that those relationships, and you want to always Build different relationships, people, some people that you can help, some people that are at your level, and then some people that are maybe like a couple steps ahead of you and develop those relationships with the people that are a couple steps ahead of you because they're they're going to pull you up to a higher mm -hmm. standard, right? And so you want people that are always pulling you up to a higher standard. Now, listen, if you have not downloaded the goal setting, the 2024 goal setting worksheet, take a minute, hit the link. It's yours. It's free. We wanted to give it to you as your gift because, listen, we are interested in you having a fantastic future, a bigger future, and one of the fastest ways to do it is through goals and setting goals. So this has been a fantastic sort of four-week kind of deep dive on goals. Mm -hmm. Lisa, like what, what's your overarching sort of like, this has really hit me big as we, we've talked about it the last four weeks? I, I believe that the concept of goal setting is, it's just very normal in our society, but how many of us actually do it well? Mm -hmm. And how many of us actually um, have positive self-talk in the process yeah. or don't procrastinate in the process? And it's not, it's not rocket science, but sometimes if we don't have realistic expectations yeah. and we don't sit down and truly have awareness and kind of plan it out, we think, oh, I want my year to look like this. But if we don't sit down and kind of plan it out, then... We just defeat ourselves. But if that's the case, and you kind of are known for that, go back and listen to the first podcast in this series because we talk about, what, 13 different, 11 different methods of goal setting, and some of them are super simple. Some of them are just like, have have kind of a word for the year. So if you want to, if you want to create new clients and you want to um, upsell to your clients, well, you know, you need to obviously do some connecting. So maybe your word for the year could be, connect. It doesn't have to be, I'm going to do this many things and this and yeah. super detail. It could just be something as simple as the one word. And my one word this year is connect. And I'm yeah. going to connect with my clients. I'm going to connect with my kids. Or or another one is is just the, the little small bites of, okay, well, I'm just going to do 10 follow-up calls today, or I'm going to do 10 follow-up mm -hmm. calls this week. That would be 10 more than I would have done had I not set that little micro goal. Yeah, and so I, goal setting can be whatever it is that makes your year better. So don't freeze frame yourself into 
this is what I have to do to goal set. Go back and listen to that podcast. Pick one of those that just really kind of fits. Pick one that fits in a way that's going to make your year better and not make you feel worse or beat yourself up. Yeah, I, I think for me, Lisa, I just want to encourage everybody, and I'm thinking through this like as we're as we're kind of you know at the beginning of the year is make your goals about transformation. Not just about transactions, this, 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 but what's the transformative aspect? Because at the end of the year, next year, I, I want to be better next year than I was this year. And what are the goals that make me better next year? And and I'm just reminded that, you know, as we set goals, we set these plans, is that they're really just guesses. And I think that just gives myself some grace because I don't know what's going to happen in the middle of the year or towards the end of next year. But, hey, right now with what I know and where I'm at, this is my best guess. And I'm going to start to make forward movement, forward movement towards that bigger future and just continue to celebrate progress. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're going to make mistakes along the way. But continuing to cel- celebrate that progress every day, every week, every month, every quarter and, um, you know, just make it about transformation. So this has been great. If you have not downloaded the worksheet, this is your last chance. Download the worksheet, click the link, it's yours. Set your goals, transform your life, create a bigger future, do all those great things. And uh, we look forward to seeing you next time on the Drama for Living podcast. 